people talk about military drones today, they usually think of stealth UAVs, artificial intelligence, and long-range precision strikes. But every advanced system has a beginning. Long before Iran introduced its modern drone fleet, there was one platform that marked its first serious move into unmanned air combat, the Karar jet-powered drone. In this video we explore how the Karar helped shape Iran's drone strategy and why it still matters today. The Karar drone was officially unveiled in 2010, at a time when Iran was still heavily dependent on imported or outdated aerial technology. Sanctions limited access to modern aircraft, forcing Iran to invest in domestic solutions. Rather than starting with slow, propeller-driven UAVs, Iranian engineers took a bold approach developing a jet-powered, unmanned aircraft. The result was Karar, meaning striker in Persian. This drone was designed to demonstrate that Iran could build fast, high-altitude unmanned systems using its own industrial base. Karar's design is relatively simple, but purposeful. Straight wings, central fuselage, rear-mounted turbojet engine, and conventional tail configuration. Unlike modern stealth drones, Karar was not built to hide, instead it prioritized speed, altitude and simplicity. The airframe uses conventional materials, allowing faster production and easier maintenance. Its design reflects its era, a transition point between target drones and combat-capable UAVs. What truly sets Karar apart is its turbojet engine. Key performance characteristics include high subsonic speed, ability to operate at higher altitudes than propeller UAVs, and short mission response time. This made Karar ideal for roles requiring quick deployment, such as air defense training and rapid response missions. Jet propulsion also helped Iran gain experience in UAV engine integration knowledge later used in more advanced drone programs. Karar was designed as a multi-role platform, capable of adapting to different missions, Originally, Karar served as a high-speed aerial target to train air defense systems, simulating hostile aircraft or cruise missiles. Equipped with basic surveillance payloads, it could perform short-range reconnaissance and battlefield observation. Some variants were shown carrying light munitions or bombs, suggesting a rudimentary strike capability. While not comparable to modern armed drones, this demonstrated Iran's early interest in unmanned attack concepts. Karar operates using ground-based remote control, with limited autonomy compared to today's UAVs. It lacks advanced AI, real-time satellite control, or stealth features. These limitations meant shorter operational range, vulnerability to air defenses, and dependence on line-of-sight or relay systems. However, as an early platform, Karar was never meant to be perfect, it was meant to teach. The true importance of Karar lies in what came after. Through this program, Iran gained experience with jet-powered UAVs, knowledge of unmanned flight control, and confidence in domestic drone production. 
Lessons from Karar directly influenced later systems, including faster drones, loitering munitions, and jet-powered UAVs seen today. Karar was a stepping stone, not an endpoint. In today's drone-dominated battlefields, Karar may look outdated. But historically, it represents Iran's early commitment to unmanned warfare. It showed that even under restrictions, Iran could innovate, experiment, and build foundations for future systems. Without Karar, many of Iran's modern UAV developments might not have happened as quickly, or at all. The Karar jet drone wasn't designed to dominate the skies, it was designed to open the door, and in unmanned air combat, that first step can be the most important of all.